Oh, you too, Miss William. We're gonna do some cooking in the backyard. I got some, uh, I'm gonna bump the camera here. I got some beef, uh, boneless uh, Texas style ribs. Package got damaged in the freezer and I got a little freezer spot there. So I figured I would go ahead and, and cook these up today. We're gonna uh, do some burnt ends my way. <laughs> I'm sure there's other ways of doing this. This is my way. <laughs> gonna put some honey barbecue sauce on there and a little bit of garlic and pepper and some salt even throw in a little bit of balsamic vinegar I've got a, a little camp oven over the fire back behind me over here and heating it up and uh, we're gonna take and slice up some onions This is, uh, in case you guys are wondering, this is a uh, B prototype of the, the new little fillet knife. As usual, I send things off to be tested while I'm testing them and I come up with uh, different grinds and different things to, to enhance the, the versatility of it before they even get the knife. So I don't even think uh, uh, Great Northern Knives has a, has a first prototype yet. But. I've already, I'm already on B, and so that's why I don't do a lot of outside testing because it it changes so quickly when when I'm doing tests on blades that uh, it just just not very productive to do that. But anyway, we'll get some feedback from Great Northern Knives anyway. Somebody had said that they wanted the blade to where it should have been dropped a little bit so they could do uh, kitchen chores. But the way that the blade is angled, then, I mean, it, it does this very well, as you can see. What I did on B was I wanted a tooth right there because when you're filleting fish or whatever you're doing, cutting through bone, you want some strong reinforced point. Right there to cut through those very tough hides on some of those catfish and uh, salmon a lot of the saltwater stuff so I did a, as small of a, a place as possible and yet still sharpen it and put a point there or a tooth so that uh, it's going to be a better fillet knife and as you can see it still has quite a bit of flex to it I did uh, the woodsman's full flat grind on it so we're going to see how that goes but anyway, all right, I got me some onions chopped up. I'm going to run over here and see if my, my pot's hot, and uh, we'll go. All right, I think the pot's hot enough. Yeah, hear that sizzle? gloves doing this is the way to go I got this tip from um, some guys in Australia the four wheel drive club on YouTube and they use welding gloves while they're cooking and I thought that was, that was a great idea Still kind of froze a little bit. That's all right. You put them in that fire, it won't be froze long. Cut that out.
going to cube these up about uh, three quarters to an inch. And I'm going to put a light coating of flour on them and brown them. Just goes through that frozen meat just like it's nothing. Actually, when I'm processing game like venison or anything like that, I like it a little bit frozen. It's just easier to handle that way. Let me check my onions. Make sure they got the lay blade. Just like that. That easy. Just that easy. Get this other one there. These back in just right now. Getting some time to work. Sorry about the table shaking, but my tripod is not. I got one of just little tabletops. Take all the fat off, but we'll take some of it off anyway. Just lays that off just like it was designed to do that. freezer burn there. Get rid of that. Take these and kind of give them a little dust of the flour.
let that drown up a little bit. I don't want the bottom to scorch, so I'm going to take it off the fire and we'll set it on the ground uh, inside the, the pit. But I'm going to put a few coals over the top of it. I'm going to slow cook it for about an hour. Well, my burn ends are, are burning. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, I talk about this um, Model B. I wanted I wanted that tooth there, and it also has kind of a a curve again right here. So as as you're filleting and you're pushing the knife through, it goes up against another curve. Um, so you got curves pulling and pushing. Again, curves just helps you and assist you while you're slicing and cutting. So I try to put as many curves as I can to uh, to benefit that. Um, so I did that, and as you saw, it slicing that frozen those frozen beef tips or spare ribs. Uh, it just man, it's just it's a slicer. And as it was uh, filleting off that that fatty portion and and those uh, um, uh, frozen bits, that it it fillets very well. It's got a pretty good flex. I don't hold like a whole lot of flex in a knife because it, it's just it's just unruly if you do that. Um, you just you can't get a good control of it. So about a medium uh, flex is is good, but. Um, so I think I think we're getting very close. Um, so you guys tell me what your thoughts are. Um, I, I do I do think that that I may expand this out just a little bit more. So when you're slicing, your hand is 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 elevated. This hand right here is elevated a little bit more. So uh, I may do that. I don't know yet. I want to try it out a little bit longer. But if I do that, I may I may thin this down maybe so I can still get that flex because if you widen this part the more steel the less flex you have so I think the flex is there so I need to keep that width I just need to might move it down just a little bit to to make the triangle there okay so when I design a knife or, or a um, there's a lot of thought goes into it um, a lot of uh, trials and and um, errors. <laughs> I mean, I've been working on a fillet knife for years, and I just uh, I'm, I'm just now got to where I think I think it's uh, I'm close to something that that I would want as a versatile fillet boning knife. Um, the fin and fur works very well, but it's 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 lacking. Okay, um, I think is uh, the multi grind will lend itself a whole lot more to uh to the task and so i think that this woodsman's full flat is the grind i was looking for on this so uh anyway uh we're still testing it and uh i may after i get done with uh using this one for uh, a while in the next shipment i may go ahead and send this one on to uh great northern knives and let them compare the two and uh, see what their thoughts are but anyway so that's my thoughts on it <laughs> All right, we'll get back with you when we uh, we check the the uh, the burnt ends, and I hope they're not burnt. I hope they're just real tasty. We'll get back with you in a little bit.
have to rotate it every once in a while because you want the heat to be even. And you got wind and colds. Some colds may be hotter than others, so you want to kind of rotate it to keep it all even. We may be having beef chips and rice. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. That has a good pot of gravy in there. Oh man, that's good. I think we're going to be having beef tips in, the, in your gravy. You can go to the house and get some rice. Oh man, that's good. Let me show you what the pot looks like. We ain't throwing that gravy away. <laughs> Beef tips and rice. Hey, roll with it. We'll put the lid back on it and let it simmer for a little bit longer. Probably about another 10, 15 minutes. Um, it should be good. my fires out and um, I got my beef tips <laughs> instead of burnt ends with barbecue sauce they're gonna be burnt ends with gravy and rice but I got to get the rice at the house and we'll cook it at the house so I'll insert a picture here I appreciate you guys uh, joining me on this and uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I'm about to <laughs> and chow down on this and uh, we'll catch you guys again very soon. I appreciate all your support. Uh, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. And um, until the next time, you guys get in the backyard with a long stick, be sure to take the child with you, get the opportunity. And don't forget those plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. Catch you again soon.